we've always talked about on this podcast is the importance of email. With email, one of those things that just makes you feel more comfortable when you have it, I think. You know, you don't have to totally rely on these third-party platforms like Facebook and Google. You know, it's not our job to try to trick somebody into buying something that they don't need or want. Ever wonder how the e-commerce brands you admire do it? How they just know the right message to send to the right people at the right time? Guess what? It's not experience. They have the right data and the right tools. They have Klaviyo. Klaviyo's data-driven marketing automation platform is sophisticated enough to power those legendary campaigns from the brands you admire, but they made it simple, easy, and fast enough for anyone to use. Klaviyo helps brands easily create personalized, multi-channel marketing campaigns using the most powerful asset, your customer's data. Klaviyo integrates with all leading e-commerce platforms, helping you use your customer data in real time to send more relevant email, and SMS automations. Plus, building a marketing campaign is drag and drop easy. You can get started with your first campaign in under an hour and easily build from there with Klaviyo's best performing templates. Klaviyo gives you all the power of an, an enterprise marketing automation platform and none of the complexity, so you can compete with the big guys. No wonder more than 65,000 brands can't get enough. To get started with your free trial of Klaviyo, visit klaviyo.com uncensored. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash uncensored. You're listening to E-Commerce Uncensored with Kevin Manell and Jason Caruso. Hey everyone, and thanks for joining us on another episode of E-Commerce Uncensored. My name is Kevin Manel, and I'm here with Jason Caruso. I felt like my intro there had a little bit more enthusiasm. What'd you think? Sure. I've been working on it. Sure. And you always bust my balls about being very dry and boring, so. You, you are. <laughs> you are. <laughs> All right, so today, uh, while Jason and I were kind of trying to figure out like what we were going to talk to you guys about, like I stumbled upon a little article that I I really kind of enjoyed it. And I can't, I think it's mo- for the most part in line with a lot of things that we talk about with email subject lines and with subject lines being one of our five keys to email, which you can get at e-commerce on sensor.com. It really kind of um, goes deeper into that subject. Um, so I thought it would be a good thing to talk about. Before we get started, Kevin, I didn't tell you this, but I want to say, I want to give a shout out to my man, Carlito. He owns a cigar lounge that I go to and he's just started listening to our podcast. And uh, every time I go in there, he's like, oh, I just listened to this episode, listen to that episode. So I want to give him a shout out. Great guy. Always, uh, always smiling. Always a, just a good guy. I wish I, I wish I, I would go. I, I wish I went into the, the I was able to go into the cigar joint more than I am. I, you know, with the baby and all kind of difficult but just a really good guy and he's starting to start to listen to our podcast so yeah you sent me that uh you sent me a picture of the place via text message and i thought you were gonna i thought you were gonna yell at me again because i never i never wrote anything back you're just annoying anyway because you get very sensitive when you text me and i don't write back like because you know why i get sensitive because when your wife calls you the the, the world ends. It just everything stops. Now oh, stop it doesn't matter who you're you were on the phone with nothing matters but your wife texted you if I text you, it's like you don't respond, <laughs> you don't say a word. You like, like it's like the complete opposite. The wife texts you and you stop the world. I text you and it's like as if I didn't text you. You know what? It's like I bet you if you asked her, she would feel the same way as you feel. Yeah. Just in the reverse, you're like having a second wife because I don't. Nothing's not as many times she. I don't write to back to her all the time either. Right, just right, because right. sometimes it just. I don't know what to say. Be like, great, okay, awesome, Acknowledge nice, that they sent sweet. you an email, a text message. <laughs> But anyway. I, anyway, the point is, is I, I did see that text message. It looks like a really cool place, really cool yeah, place really to just hang out. Dude, I mean, and it's the same dudes all the time. They're really friendly. They're really nice. A guy bought dinner the other night. I went in there to buy a cigar and I ended up staying. And then some, some one, of the, one of the guys in there bought dinner for everybody. So it was like, yeah, it was pretty, pretty cool. That's cool. Well, all right. So, my man, Carlito. Take me there one day. Anyway, so this is, um, this was an article. This is by um, Content Marketing Institute. And I honestly, I've never heard of them, but Me neither. when I found this article just posted today, I thought it was, I thought it was pretty good. So it talks about like the 10 best practices when writing a subject line. 
And um, the first one is, is making it personalized. And this is a big reason why every time I kind of do a lead magnet or I have an opt-in form, I always like to include the first name as a field that you fill in, just because I think about this in the back of my head. And even though I know how this works and it's not actually personalized, it always grabs my attention. So this would be like you saying in a subject line, Kevin, come check this out, right? And it would be dynamically added for everybody who's on your list. Yeah, I agree. But Kev, before we get into that, I just want to talk about a little, a little bit of experience that we just had recently. Um, you know, COVID is really, uh, you know, we're, we're seeing like with some of our clients, it's really like, it's really made their businesses go crazy. We see businesses like our, our wildlife photography business that started out like gangbusters during COVID then kind of slowed down a little bit. Um, and one thing that, you know, we've always talked about on this podcast is the importance of email. And, you know, we were going through a little lull, you know, the iOS update, the change to Facebook ads and those kind of things, like everybody else, we're trying to figure out. Um, but one constant that we had was that our email list um, at least our customers were still spending money with us. Mm -hmm. We sent out an email, I believe, or not an email, but we sent out an email campaign uh, last week. And within like three or four days, it did like whatever, $17,000. Right. Um, 16, I don't remember the exact number, but it was somewhere around there, 15 to 17, call it. And it just makes me like think that, or just, it just reminds me that, email is still king. Yeah. I mean, it definitely is the most um, reliable thing that we have. Like every day we're hit with like some kind of new algorithm from these platforms or a new, another reason why we can't track this or that because of privacy. But with email, you always, it, it kind of, um, it's one of those things that just makes you feel more comfortable when you have it, I think, because you don't, you know, you don't have to totally rely on these third party platforms like Facebook and Google, you know, you have that in your back pocket and it actually absolutely has been that one thing that has always been there for us. Right. So one thing that I just Kev, um, I'm just, I'm looking in Clavio right now because I want to just see something because uh, one thing that I've done as it relates to subject lines is you know, every time that I, we send out an email, right. We send out, um, you know, there's a subject line and then there is like the, the text, what is that called? The pre, the header text or the, the header text. text. Or, yeah. yeah. So what I've been doing is a little, a little hack that I think people should test because I'm seeing that it works. And that is I take the subject line and I just copy it in to the the preview text the last three emails that i did with that had a 39.9 percent open rate a 39.3 percent open rate and a 44.9 percent open rate so when you're looking at the email you're saying so you have the subject line and then the little preview text that you may see that sometimes could be like the first paragraph of the email or whatever you're just using the, the subject line as well. I just take the subject line and I copy and paste it. And actually I've been doing this for a little while. And the first one I, for, for the same campaign, got a 30% open rate, then a 20% open rate, then a 17 and then a 20. So, I mean, the average open rate for, for these emails, and I told you, I figured this out with this campaign, remember? Yeah. I mean, you, you, you I, I question it. And it's interesting because that's one of, that's kind of one of the things they talk about in this article is using, using up as much real estate as you possibly can within that email box, which is why you have that. Make sure you have something in that header text. So it also, it, it kind of like encourages that click through in the email. They're actually, you know, actually saying that you should have, you know, put as much in there as you can, you know, to fill up that extra space. But what you're saying is like, what you've seen is even if you have like a five word subject line using that in the header text is has been working really well yeah because what i'm what i'm finding is that 
when you have a subject line and then you have different text in the preview text, you're essentially creating two subject lines. So let's say the first one is good and the second one is crap. Now they're not going to open it because your preview text is junk. Whereas if you don't allow them to see what's inside the email and you just take your subject line and duplicate it or copy it, now they have to open the email. Yeah, you're giving them almost like um, two opportunities to decide not to open the email. Right? Exactly. Two different opportunities. And it's funny because I, when I create my the emails for our clients, sometimes like I'll, I'll work on the subject line and then I'll like, I'll put the offer in the preheader text. I'm like, well, that's really dumb. Like you want to add some curiosity. I add curiosity in the subject line, but then I give it away in the preview text. So what am I doing? So I right. Uh, exactly. So that's, that's kind of where it came from with me. And it seems like it's getting the results that I, I was looking for. I mean, it seems like you know, the emails are being opened. Yeah. That's interesting. I'm going to try, I'm going to try that too. Yeah. Try it. Um, so I, I touched on the first one that Ben, you went back and I'm glad you kind of jumped in and kind of gave it a little bit of a more context. Well, you, you, talk you about. tend to do that sometimes. Like you just like, like you don't give context. You just jump in and like, well, like, you, you told me to like try to direct it. So I went there. Yeah. I was, yeah, yeah. You know, so it's good that you jumped in, but we did talk about like personalizing the subject line, which I really love. Like, like I said, I get, fooled by that all the time even though i'm an email marketer and i know what they're doing it's not they're not speaking to me personalized but it really just grabs your attention and I'm billy speaking jean to you personalized not talking to you personally um and billy jean does this a lot he does it, and i he gets me every time when he does that like he just like it'll be like um kevin what exactly did you do question mark question mark i'm like oh, fuck like what again i open it every time so what i do that a lot yeah, and I, I think the personalized stuff is great as well. I will tell you that I I know two of two people. One is a really well-known copywriter, and one is somebody in Russell Brunson's clan who she's um, not necessarily working with ClickFunnels, but she's a, a disciple of ClickFunnels. Both of them say never use first names because they want you to – they, they want you to be talking to your friend. So like they're, what they would say is like, if I was emailing you, Kevin, I wouldn't say Kevin, I would just write it out. But I will say that I don't necessarily agree with that because when I see my name, I do think it's somebody that knows me. Yeah, I do. Oh. And it's weird. Cause I would, you, you think in your head, you're like, think it's a personalized no, but you're right. Like I would never write a subject line to you and say, Jason, check this out. <laughs> it's like right. kind of like just the psychology of it. Right. Interesting. Another one is short and to the point. I think that's pretty self-explanatory. I mean, you don't want to, you know, you don't want to give away everything in the subject line, obviously, but you also don't want like, because you're only allowed a certain amount of characters in the subject line anyway, and you don't want to be cut off halfway through, especially on mobile. So you want to be, you want to get to the point right away in the beginning and make it short. Yeah, I think they said somewhere in that article, Kevin, that four words when have like in their testing, four words in your subject line is one or is the best. Yeah, four. Maybe, maybe we'll get that to later. Yeah, I don't know. It down says at the bottom. Down at the bottom. Uh, yeah, yeah, four words. Yes. Open rates, average open rates. It's close between four and five words, 18% average open rate for four words, 17% for five words, and then it it actually goes down when you get to nine words, but then 10 plus words, the open rates go back up, which is interesting, That's interesting yeah. to like 14%. So, um, and the next one, it, we talked about uh, using all of the available uh, real estate uh, that you're available inside that uh, before they open it. So we talked about that subject line plus the pre-header text. So that yeah, but I, I, um, yeah, like I said, I, I think that's right. I don't think that I don't, I, I hear this a lot. I hear it with Facebook ads. I hear it with a lot of things like, oh, don't copy your titles of your ads and then put that same title in the ad copy. Like you're wasting space. And like, I, I, I kind of don't, don't agree with that. Like, I feel like different people get caught in different areas. So like for me, the title could be in multiple places. So I don't know that I, I yeah, I think some people read 
certain things first and second. Like maybe some people read that uh, pre-header text first when they're going through their emails. You never know. Yeah. So, so yeah. Um, and actually this next one is actually something you messaged that you mentioned when we were on the phone just before this, uh, this podcast is about using numbers in inside your subject lines. Yeah. I mean, they're, they've, uh, everybody kind of wants to know like, like the hacks or the cheats or the shortcuts. And anytime you can use like, you know, don't do these five or don't make these five mistakes when you're whatever it's like, like you attach a number to it. And, and for whatever reason, there's some, there's some curiosity created in it. Yeah. It's like the whole thing is like more and more to read about this stuff is like, it's such a psychological thing. Like this quote says, our brains are attracted to numbers because they automatically organize information into a logical order in marketing and advertising. Our headline is an advertisement for your content, a single small odd number digit, like seven, for example, is like candy for your organizational mind. Yeah. And, uh, this book I'm reading right now. So the same thing, use odd numbers. Here's like, it, it compares these two. It's like top tips to lose weight now versus lose five pounds in 45 days. Yeah, I think that's a perfect example. Ever wonder how the e-commerce brands you admire do it? How they just know the right message to send to the right people at the right time? Guess what? It's not experience. They have the right data and the right tools. They have Klaviyo. Klaviyo's data-driven marketing automation platform is sophisticated enough to power those legendary campaigns from the brands you admire, but they made it simple, easy, and fast enough for anyone to use. Klaviyo helps brands easily create personalized, multi-channel marketing campaigns using the most powerful asset, your customer's data. Klaviyo integrates with all leading e-commerce platforms, helping you use your customer data in real time to send more relevant email and SMS automations. Plus, building a marketing campaign is drag and drop easy. You can get started with your first campaign in under an hour and easily build from there with Klaviyo's best performing templates. Klaviyo gives you all the power of an, an enterprise marketing automation platform and none of the complexity so you can compete with the big guys. No wonder more than 65,000 brands can't get enough. To get started with your free trial of Klaviyo, visit klaviyo.com slash uncensored. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash uncensored. Again, I, I, like, I like always having a destination. Mm -hmm. I, we talked about, talk about this a lot. I feel like having a destination for your, for your buyers um, is pretty important. Yeah, exactly, yeah. Um, using power words, um, things that add curiosity. Um, do you have numbers on these, Kev? Cause you're just kind of reading them. They don't have like, one, well, we two. went to, we, we, I started going, I started at number one, but then your, uh, your comment about the subject and the pre-header text jumped us down to number three. So I figured I'd just right, go. Well, off. I'm having a hard time following you. So, <laughs> so what number are we on? This here? is number five. This is number okay. five. Number five. Good. So we're halfway through. Okay. Power words to arouse curiosity. Things like, uh, I don't know, there's a whole list of hit, list so of them you here. Let, let, say some of them. Um, confidential, things that peak classified, incredibly insane, secrets, things like that, that peak yeah. people's curiosity. Yeah, and I think those work too, because I think everybody wants to know, like we said before, the hack or the little, the secret, like, you know, Russell Brunson, you know, copy or uh, copy sorry. um expert secrets and dot com secrets it's like when you're especially when you're selling something that is hard to attain mm -hmm. having those having like that 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 those like what they call power words really can make a difference i think and i've i've seen it make a difference too because i've seen it like where on me it's worked on me where I'm like, oh man, like I want to know something that nobody else knows about. <laughs> right, exactly. And appealing to you, the, another thing in the same section is about appealing to people's vanity. Uh, you know, their skincare, a dazzling skincare product that will make you look younger. Those kinds of things. Yeah, so like this goes to, I'm reading um, Copywriting Secrets right now. And in this book, uh, Jim Edwards talks about the 11 
reasons why people buy. And I'm going to read them real quick. Uh, to make money, to save money, to save time, to avoid effort, to escape mental or physical pain, get more comfort, achieve greater cleanliness or hygiene to attain better health, gain praise, feel more loved, increase their popular popularity or social status. And I think that's, you know, almost what these guys are saying too. Like, um, that, that exact subject line that you yeah. read basically is to feel more loved or to increase their popularity. And it's amazing because all these things kind of tie in, whether you're using subject lines or whether you're trying to sell something to someone, people are triggered by the same things over and over. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, one thing that I've been reading a lot about from that, like these, these top marketers is how, you know, it's not our job to try to trick somebody into buying something that they don't need or want. It's our job to <laughs> ampli amplify their problem or desire and your product fulfill it. Interesting. It's an interesting yeah. concept. Yeah. And then it starts at the, at the subject line. You can do a lot of this stuff, um, build trust, like use words like, you know, best selling. Uh, no questions asked, no risk, you know, those kinds of things work well. Um, creating like the, the fear of loss works really well. Like when we're ending an offer, we'll be like, you're going to miss out. You know, this that is your last tonight. chance. Those kinds of things. hours. Yep. Um, all those kinds of, you know, power words that you can use to get people to open your email. This one too is like, uh, what you number, know, you what number, or number six. Yeah, number six. Number six. So you're like you're talking like we know what you're gonna say. So you do. Gotta, you do you know. Do, I say. I don't. I don't know. I don't have it. <laughs> number in front six. Of me. Get to the offer. So get we talk. Offer. We we talk. We did talk about using curiosity, but there is times where you want to just say what the offer is, right? In the subject line. In the subject line. Yeah. So, so check I, out our awesome twenty percent off offer or fifty percent off this. It's 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 buy it's bogo time. I use sometimes buy one get one off, uh, get one free or something like that. Yes, you know? but there is there is a a trick to this. Okay. Or not a trick, but there is a guideline that you must follow because this will backfire on you. I found that depending on the price of the product, that tipping point from where it helps and it hurts changes a little bit. So for for instance, if you're selling a hundred thousand dollar car, twenty percent off is pretty darn enticing mm -hmm. and you would open it for that. Right. But 20% off, you know, a $5 widget may not be that exciting. Yeah, right? exactly. Yeah. I noticed that today with one of our clients too, we have a, uh, an abandoned cart flow that gives a 10% off uh, coupon. coupon. And, but I happen to abandon cart on their website for a nine dollar product so it was like saving 90 cents so it, you're right it doesn't you're like okay 10 10 percent off okay let's... right so like if you're going to use if you're going to use a percentage off or a price discount make sure that it is large enough that it will make a difference so what i mean by that is if you're going to do 50% off, that would probably work with anything. If you're going to do 60% off or 70% off or 80% off, it doesn't really matter how much the product is. It's going to work. Mm -hmm. um, but if the product, like you said, is, you know, not that expensive, you know, you don't want to use those, you know, 10% yeah. or makes, 5%. Yeah, you want to say, sense, yeah. right, get 50% off or, yeah. Yeah. And also like, to, I, I use this a lot, like towards the end of the offer, you're like, okay, some of these people may have not seen, have gotten a chance to open the email yet, but it's ending. So let me put out the offer right in the subject line. So they know what the email is right away. Right. So like we, we talk about in our five keys, like not giving people enough information to in the subject line to know what's in the email. Mm -hmm. Right. Like, so you don't want to, you don't want to say like, um, something like, uh, here is, you know, 
here is five dollars off this this product yeah because they can make the decision whether they, or not to open it at that point they can make the decision whether or not to open it or whether or not it's relevant in the subject line mm -hmm. whereas if you say something like you know from now until monday only get this and you leave it like that mm -hmm. now they have to open the email to see exactly what is in it whereas if you tell them at the end of the day i guess what i'm saying is if the discount and the amount that you're taking off of the product is large enough you can use it in the subject line if it's if it's not really going to make that much of a difference then you're probably going to hurt yourself so a five dollars off or five percent off i would never put that in the subject line yeah get something for free that's like big put that right in the subject line wait before you go anywhere though one thing you gotta be careful about is free may throw your emails into spam. So yeah. there are words that throw that, that, you know, these I or these ESPs um, pick up. So be, just be careful of that as well. Yeah. I'm sure like, yeah, you gotta be careful about those th kinds of things, dollar signs, um, you know, percentage characters, those kinds of things trigger somebody's spam bots for sure. Right. Number seven, make an announcement make people feel like you're um, they're getting some insider information. For instance, be the first to order Tesla Model 3 available now. Exclusive preview fifth annual Black Friday boot camp. These are appealing because they feel like they're getting information that's not necessarily available to the public. Right. And everybody makes, again makes wants, you feel special. Makes you feel special. Right. This next one, number eight is kind of like I'm like back and forth on this one and I haven't really done it enough to really test it back and forth, but like using emojis in your subject line. Um, the way this article says it is like it had its day. And as we speak, I just got a, I just got an, 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 e an email from Zipify with the emoji on it, believe it or not. But um, I th they're basically saying it had its day and it's really not working anymore. It's like not as big of a deal to anybody. I've never seen it work to be honest with you. Like I've never seen it. I've never seen it hurt, but I've also never seen it actually change anything. I think it's just a way to maybe just change it up a little bit. I got, I got a, speaking of Billie Jean too, I got one with an emoji. It says, read this while, <laughs> read this while you, and then it has the poop emoji. Right. I like that one. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. just so a way to be creative. Yeah, I, sometimes I think it's just funny. Think about it like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, number nine, avoid shouting. And I think that just means like, you know, exclamation points too much, too many exclamation points, uppercase letters, uppercase things like that. letters. Yeah. I mean, there's a time and a place for that. So I don't know that I, I necessarily agree with that. I mean, I, I have seen like, even in this, this copywriting book, it does say that, you know, people will, it, it actually, it gives, Jim gives a pretty cool um, analogy. He said that animals in the wild, Right. If one animal sounds an alarm that there's, say, a tiger in the area, all of the animals will listen. Mm -hmm. He said, but when that tiger leaves and that animal sounds the all clear, only the animals of the same type will respond. Mm -hmm. Only the same animals to whoever that was will respond, okay. which is interesting. <laughs> it's interesting, right? Did you so hear like, that? In this book, he was oh. talking about that. So what he was saying is we listen to warnings and I can, I can, I can think of some times where in an email, you want to say warning mm -hmm. in the like subject all caps. Line. Right. So, I think with some of these things that you have to test them just like anything else. I mean, even the, the advice we give, we see some things work definitively with some clients of ours on our stuff on a, that sometimes don't work with other people. We, we had a client, actually, we talk a, a lot about our good experiences, but we had actually a client who we started working with who he bought his email list. Number one mistake is buying an email list. 
You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, I know exactly what you're talking right. about. Yeah. He bought email lists. Nobody on his list knew the, who the hell they were. And the things that we do in our email strategies weren't working. Yeah, at but that point, it doesn't matter what you test or what you At do. that point, it doesn't matter because there are people who have no idea who you are. Mm -hmm. And they're, they're not there voluntarily. So, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, uh, just a, real quick, because I found this interesting with this. Uh, this are article. you in a rush? You, I feel like you're rushing. No, I'm not. Because you went uh, to number 10. Number 10 oh. is test. Oh. <laughs> so okay. That's why I'm doing it. This is why you're jumping around. You asked me to lead the conversation and you're jumping ahead. So I didn't know that was number 10. <laughs> I know you didn't. But like, I'm trying to figure out like, okay, that's number 10. So we can move on. Um, so anyway, the, the whole, it actually says that like all caps will also get caught in spam. So you should be careful with that. And I've also seen, I've also tested and seen that all lowercase in, in a subject line can work really well because it looks more informal. So, but number 10, like you said, Jason, and this article is tests. And I think that's, that goes back to everything, you know, just test it and see what works best for you. What works best for your audience. I, um, it's funny because, you know, we talk a lot about testing and, um, we do test one thing that we don't do that we should do more of is document mm -hmm. like actually document the tests. Like everybody runs a B split tests in their emails and then just like, Oh, okay, well this one worked and that one didn't. But this guy, Jim Edwards and this copywriting, I keep talking about this book because it's the one I'm reading right now. And it's like kind of fresh on my brain, but he talks about like, he just documented everything that worked and that didn't work. He was not a good sales copy writer. He just, kind of would test things and then document it and then just not do them again if they didn't work. And then he would just see patterns. Um, that's one thing that we don't do very well. And I think we probably should, but, and that is like actually documenting your test because you can go back and see. Uh, yeah, we, you're, we, absolutely, you're absolutely right. Yeah. I mean, what, I mean, what good is the test if you're not able to use it later? We do it all the time. And I felt that I felt that way yesterday when we spoke to our other partner and he's like, well, is there any data to show like what things worked and what things didn't work? I'm like, yeah, there probably is. We have to look at it. Right. It's like stuff that we haven't looked at. Exactly. Um, I mean, I think, uh, I think it was a really good article. I think that, um, you know, I, I do think there is some ambiguity in there. Like it's not all just like, this is how it is, but that's how everything is. I think in our business, it, it isn't, you know, so straightforward. You do have to test and see what your audience. And I, you, you know, can't stress that enough. Like what your audience will respond to. That's what exactly. it comes down to. Exactly. So, yeah, I think that about covers it. I thought this article was really cool. Um, I can link to it too in the, in the podcast notes, but make sure you guys subscribe to the podcast and um, uh, connect with us on our Facebook group, ecommerce on tensor.com slash Facebook. And um, as always, you can check us out at ecommerce on tensor.com. Talk to you guys real soon. Attention e-commerce founders, entrepreneurs, side hustlers, marketers, and growth hackers. If you're working round the clock to build your dream e-commerce business, you need an e-commerce marketing platform that works just as hard as you do. That means you need Klaviyo. With Klaviyo, you'll delight customers and drive revenue at the same time. With personalized emails and SMS marketing campaigns that you can design and send in minutes. For more, visit klaviyo.com uncensored. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com uncensored.